Okay, this video is going along with chapter 17, section 2. Now, in this section, we have a lot of vocabulary and a lot of new applications being applied to the math that we are learning. And the interesting pieces here is that we are looking at cost recovery, recovery allowance, and then the modified accelerated cost recovery system, which they have an acronym for the MACRS, which in 1986, the government modified their depreciation tables that they have been using for a number of years. And so we're going to see how they apply these in the various exercises by looking at the table and then figuring out how they use that information in order to get the answers we need. So in number one here, this is in the textbook, and we're just going to kind of go through this to see how they're coming up with this information. So we have Ink Masters Printing purchased a new printing press, so that's the item. And that's going to be important for our discussion here is what is it, because that depends on the table and the number of years they'll allow for depreciation. For 660,000, 100,000. So on February 9th of 210, and the year is also going to be important. Press is also used for business 90% of the time, so that's a key piece of information. As the accountant for the company, you are elected to take a $100,000 Section 179 deduction. Hopefully you've read through that, so you know what that is. Press also qualified for a special depreciation allowance. We're going to look on Table 17.4 for that, see how they came up with that number. So the first question says, what was the basis for depreciation of the printing press? Well, we took the value, because again, we're looking for the key pieces of information in any exercise, and 90% of the time. So it's not 100%, so they can't write it all off. So that's where they came up with the 0.9. Change the 90% to a decimal, and they multiply. So they can depreciate 594,000 of value. Okay, so the tentative basis they're going to take that value and they take that special 179 deduction. So that comes right off. Okay, so they're going to take care of that first, and you will do that when you do your homework exercise. So that's going to come off first. So that takes care of that piece of information. Okay, and then it also said that it qualified for a special depreciation allowance. And they said 50%. Well, how did they get that? Well, they used table 17.4. And 17.4 is right here. And the, remember we talked about that piece of information over here on February 9, 2010? Well, then they used that year. So that year falls in this bracket between December 31.07 in January 1st, 2011, so that special allowance is 50%. So all that information that they give you is going to be used to the various pieces of this puzzle. So we have three different year categories, and the allowance is different for each year. Okay, so now we know how they got the 50% based on the year. So we have that number now. Part B what was the amount of the third year depreciation using the MACRSs? Okay, so printing presses are in the seven year bare property class from Table 17.1. So let's take a look at that. So, Table 17.1, we have three year property, five year property, seven year property, 10, 15, 20, 25 residential rental property and non-residential real property, so that'd be real estate. And each one of these over the road tractors, some horses and hogs, so you know it's very specific on where things fall in. Office machinery, breeding or dairy cattle, sheep and goats, or five-year property, and so on. So since they said it was a printing press, they said it was a seven-year property, it says assets use in printing and publishing. So that's where they found this, and that's where they came up with this seven-year property. 
It's very detailed, kind of an interesting reading list to kind of go through there and decide how much the length of time would be for the various entities and what they're used for. So going back to the next piece of information, because they're asking what is the amount of the third year depreciation using? Okay, so we know it was a seven year property, because we got that from table 17.1. And they're asking for the third year, so now we have to go to 17.2 to figure out this amount. So we have a seven year property, third year, and there's our number. So there's a lot going back and forth. We need 17.1 to determine what, how many year, then we need this table, the depreciation rate for the property classes, which we determined from 17.1, to get the value. And they've had it predetermined. We don't have to do any math, we just have to be able to read the tables. So now that we have that information, we would multiply that amount times the value of the assets, because we only get to that much credit, we only get 17.49% depreciation for the third year. So here's our total, multiply it in your calculator, and you would get this amount of write-off for the third year. So that answers that question. But we had to go and get quite a lot of information, doing a lot of steps in order to get there. Most of it was just reading a table and applying simple math calculators. So let's take a look at another one of these. We're going to work through number four, where it had Sunnyland orange groves planted fruit trees. So that is the item we're going to be looking up valued at 375000 on February 12, 2004. The accountant for the company took a 75000 Section 179 deduction, and the asset is entitled to a special depreciation allowance. So those are those key pieces of information we need. So we start off by, on the tentative basis, we have the total that we have, and we're going to take away the Section 179 deduction. We do that first, all, always. So now we have a 300,000 we're playing with. They also said the asset is entitled to a special depreciation allowance. Okay, so where are we getting that? Well, we have to go back into the tables. So in our special appreciation allowance table, it was February of 2004. So that would fall into this date category right here. So 50%. All right. So then we just use our 50% category that we just found. And then we just simply multiply by the 300,000. So we have a total depreciation available of $150,000. Okay. So then our second question, what is the property class for this set asset under the MACRSs? Okay, so let's go back. They planted fruit trees. So we're looking for fruit trees. So as we're looking through the categories here, we notice trees and vines bearing fruit or nuts. So this is where it would fall under, and it's going to fall under a 10 year property. So the answer to part B then would be 10-year property. And it's pretty straightforward. You just have to find the information in the tables. So what is the percentage for the sixth year of depreciation for this property? So we have a 10-year property. We're looking for year six. So we go back to the table. So we have a 10-year property, year six, 7.37%. Okay, So that answers that question, 7.37%. See, what is the amount of depreciation expense in the final year of the write-off? So the final year of a 10-year property, okay, so we have to go back to the tables again. 10-year okay, property, final year, 3.28%. So all we do is take our amount times our last year as a decimal, remember to move it over to, multiply by 150,000, and we're going to get our final year write-off. That's the last little bit that they can write off of the $4,920. So again, it's pretty straightforward. You're just simply following the various steps 
taking the key pieces of information. You need the date. What is their 179 deduction? Or do they have any special allowances? And then looking up what, how many years they would have by the type of item it is. So all of these are going to be very similar. So again, the math isn't overly complicated. It's just making sure you've got the right information in the right table and then applying it, of course, in the right way. Have fun.